Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chansom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 15th of December. India reports 22,065 new coronavirus cases, lowest daily rise since July 4. Pakistan state structure unresponsive to voice of opera, says human rights advocate. And bomb blast kills deputy governor of Afghanistan's capital, Kabul. And now for all the details. India reported 22,065 new coronavirus infections, taking its total to 9.9 million, making it the lowest daily rise since July 4. Speaking at the 31st special session of the UN General Assembly in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, India's top diplomat Vikas Swarup said that India shouldered its responsibility as the pharmacy of the world during the COVID-19 pandemic and the country's timely graded and proactive response protected huge population from COVID-19. In a significant milestone in its fight against the novel coronavirus, India's recovery rate escalated to 95.12%, India's Health Ministry informed on Tuesday. India's recovery rate is one of the highest in the world for countries with high case load. India reported 22,065 new coronavirus infections, taking its total to 9.9 million, making it the lowest daily rise since July 4. Vikas Swarup, Secretary West at India's Foreign Ministry on Tuesday said that India shouldered its responsibility as the pharmacy of the world during the COVID-19 pandemic. He made the remarks at the United Nations General Assembly's special session on COVID-19. Within two months of the pandemic, we expanded our diagnostic facilities from just one major facility for pan-India testing to more than 2,000 today. From having almost no domestic manufacturing of PPE kits, we have today become the second largest manufacturer of PPEs. More than 17,000 dedicated COVID facilities were set up with 1.6 million isolation beds. Digital tools such as the Arogya Setu app were developed and are being effectively used for extensive contact tracing. Meanwhile, traders in Indian textile hub in Western Surat city are hopeful that the industry is on the road to recovery after coronavirus lockdown and shortage of workers brought heavy losses to the industry. With the world returning to its normal self and economy showing signs of recovery, the textile business has also started to pick up. Pakistani human rights advocate Aya Rahman has said that Pakistan's state structure is quite anti-people and it is unresponsive to the voice of the oppressed. He made the remarks during a webinar while highlighting cases of enforced disappearances in Pakistan, Sindh and Balochistan and atrocities against minorities in the country. Pakistan's state structure is quite anti-people and it is unresponsive to the voice of the oppressed. Pakistani poet and human rights advocate I.A. Rahman said recently while adding that enforced disappearances and forceful conversion of girls from minority communities are matters of great concern. Speaking during a webinar by World Sindhi Congress, Rahman said that the situation in context to human rights is far from satisfactory, particularly in Pakistan, Sindh and Balochistan. In, in particular, some of the areas of Pakistan, uh, disappearances, forced conversions, denial of rights, and also the, the justice system is not in a position or not attuned to resist their grievances adequately. Pakistan's establishment has long been criticized over its heinous practices of enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings perpetrated by Pakistani security agencies to muzzle dissenting voices in Sindh and Balochistan. 
Other activists in the panel also expressed concern over high impunity in both the regions, especially since the launch of construction of the China-Pakistan economic corridor. Moving on, a protest was held outside the Pakistani embassy in the United States on Monday, demanding an apology for the 1971 genocide named Operation Searchlight. Dozens of protesters belonging to a U.S.-based Bangladeshi organization, along with other South Asian minorities, raised flags, held placards and chanted anti-Pakistan slogans. A U.S.-based Bangladeshi organization, along with other South Asian minorities, held a protest outside the Pakistani embassy in Washington, D.C. on Monday, demanding an apology from Pakistan for the 1971 genocide named Operation Searchlight. Dozens of protesters raised flags, held placards and chanted anti-Pakistan slogans as they claimed the goal of the 1971 operation was to crush the Bengali nationalist movement through fear. Pakistan between 1948 to 1971 began a military crackdown on Eastern Wing, now Bangladesh, to suppress Bengali calls for self-determination. Pakistan Army allegedly killed about 100,000 Bengalis, then under Operation Searchlight. Activists claim the army targeted academics and scholars, specifically murdering many university students and professors. So I want all the war criminals and uh, who are involved in this, in, in this crime against humanity, they should be punished and they should be brought to justice. So that's what is my demand. Meanwhile, a bicycle rally was also organized in Bangladeshi capital Dhaka, in which over 120 people participated, demanding an apology for the brutality done by the Pakistani forces in 1971. In news from Afghanistan, Kabul's deputy governor and his secretary were killed in a blast in Afghanistan's capital city on Tuesday. Security officials said, adding that a sticky bomb was attached to his car by unknown assailants. Mahboob Ullah Mohebi, the deputy governor, was travelling to work with his security guards when the bomb attached to his vehicle detonated. No group immediately claimed responsibility for the blast, in which two of his guards were also injured. In a separate attack in Kabul on Tuesday, a policeman was killed and two others wounded when gunmen attacked their checkpoint. Last week, a government prosecutor was also shot dead in Kabul while he was on his way to work. More on news from Afghanistan. U.S. Special Envoy for Peace in Afghanistan, Zalme Khalilzad, has urged the Taliban and the Afghan government to swiftly resume peace talks after they mutually agreed over a three-week break. The two Afghan warring sides have been engaged in negotiations in Doha since September and post the process for internal consultations ahead of their return to the table on January 5. U.S. Special Envoy Zalmay Khalilzad has said, Tragically, the war continues in Afghanistan and the need for a political settlement, reduction in violence and a ceasefire remain urgent. Khalilzad in a tweet on Monday night said, given how much is at stake, it is imperative that there are no delays in resumption of talks and they must resume on January 5 as agreed. The envoy's remarks come as the Afghan government and the Taliban and their representatives in Doha mutually agreed on a three-week break over the past weekend. The Afghan government and the Taliban have been engaged in Doha since September and paused the process for internal consultations ahead of their return to the table on January 5 without fixing the venue for the talks. Meanwhile, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani said the second round of peace negotiation talks should be held in Afghanistan. He cautioned, while the Taliban is claiming that they are on Afghan soil, why aren't they holding talks on Afghan soil? Moving on to news from Nepal. Nepal on Monday was rocked by anti-government protests organized by the opposition Nepali Congress, which condemned the ruling government's apathy towards democratic values and response to COVID-19 pandemic. Recently, thousands of pro-monarch protesters had taken to the streets of capital Kathmandu, marking the first large-scale demonstration in support of monarchy after its abolishment in the country during the early 21st century. 
Main opposition Nepali Congress on Monday launched nationwide protest against the ruling Nepal Communist Party, calling the government out for corruption, bad governance and its authoritarian motives. Thousands of people took to the streets from various locations and later convened a corner assembly in capital Kathmandu's Shanti Bhatika area. The Nepali Congress also blamed the ruling government of harboring corruption and encouraging embezzlement as its interference has been seen avidly in the judiciary and justice system. <laughs> यत्रो 70 वर्ष देखि नेपाली जनताले लोकतान्त्रिक व्यवस्थाको लागि स्थापनाको लागि संघर्ष बलिदान गरे त्यसैले बदनाम गर्ने गरेको न कुशासन भ्रष्टाचार भ्रष्टाचार पनि श्रृंखलाबद्ध 101 बढेर करोडौ करोड अरबौको चाहिँ भ्रष्टाचारका कुराहरु अदालतको आफ्नो मर्यादा छ त्यो मर्यादा पनि नमान्ने amid the rising covid-19 pandemic and mounting death toll the number of daily covid-19 tests has dropped below 10000 while other countries are already on the way to procure vaccines against the virus, the incumbent government has been criticized for not paying attention to the issue and the way it is handling the coronavirus crisis. The coronavirus crisis is अहिले हाम्रो यो सुई दिनु पर्नेलाई निशुल्क गर्नु पर्नेलाई इनले प्राइभेट बारे दिन खोजिरहेछ यो अति यो ट्र्याक बाट यो एकदम ट्र्याक बाट बाहिर गएछ यसले समावेशी खानलाई चाहिँ गणतन्त्र खानलाई चाहिँ अ वीक अगो थाउजेंड्स ऑफ प्रो मोनार्क प्रोटेस्टर्स हैड टेकन टू द स्ट्रीट्स ऑफ काठमांडू मार्किंग द फर्स्ट लार्ज स्केल डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन इन सपोर्ट ऑफ मोनार्की आफ्टर इट्स अबॉलिशमेंट इन द कंट्री ड्यूरिंग द अर्ली 21st सेंचुरी Couples belonging to different tribal communities of Odisha, Jharkhand and West Bengal states on Monday tied the nuptial knot in India's eastern Midnapur city at a mass wedding ceremony amid the coronavirus pandemic. Mass weddings are popular traditions, especially among the economically backward sections of the Indian society as they help to reduce the financial burden on the parents or guardians of the brides. As many as 12 tribal couples on Monday tied the nuptial knot in India's eastern Midnapur city at a mass wedding ceremony amid coronavirus pandemic. The couples belonging to different tribal communities of Odisha, Charkhand and West Bengal states who were unable to marry owing to various circumstances, mostly poverty, came to the program. A local charity organization helped these couples in getting married with traditional ceremonies of their respected religions, after which they were also presented with wedding gifts deemed essential to begin a new life. <laughs> Mass weddings are popular traditions, especially among the economically backward sections of the Indian society, as they help to reduce the financial burden on the parents or guardians of the brides. Apple growers and dealers alike are benefiting from the cold chain storages in India's Jammu and Kashmir to stock their produce and slowly release it when they can fetch decent prices in the market. The cold chain storage facilities also offer grading, sorting and packaging services. Apple growers and dealers alike are benefiting from cold chain storages in Pulwama district of India's Jammu and Kashmir to stock and slowly release a produce in the market when they can fetch decent prices. The health pack or off-season fruit stock in refrigeration chambers is also helping avert the problem of glut in the apple market by regulating supply to the terminal markets. The cold chain facilities also offer services of grading, sorting and packaging before the stock reaches the markets in refrigerated trucks. Cold storage is very Apples from Kashmir are famous across India for their taste and color. The horticulture sector is a major contributor to the economy of Jammu and Kashmir. Besides apples, other fruits such as walnuts, pears and almonds are some of the major commercial crops of the region. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Asia Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.